The gates of heavens, of the heavens, will not be opened up for them. The sky will not be opened up. They will not enter paradise until a camel can go through the eye of a needle. See how that verse fits in? This is the time. This is the point that this verse was revealed for. Then Allah will say, Return my slave to the earth. For I have promised that from it I have created them, and from it I will return them, and from it I will raise them at another time. And so the evil soul will be thrown back to the earth, and it will land in its body. Then begins a new life. Hayat al-Barzakh. This is the Barzakh zone. Some call it the Hayat fil-Qabr. It is the life in the grave. Because the time in the grave and the Barzakh... <laughs> Bam! <laughs> I greet you in the words of Assalamu alaikum, which means peace and blessings be upon you. And I mention both Jesus and Muhammad's names. Peace be upon them both. I want to say hi to the people in the United States, Canada, Central America, Asia, the Middle East, in Africa and today I have somebody on the show that has a totally different opinion doesn't like the Underground Railroad and think we anti-semitic and think that we you know we just got history mixed up but I always let people come on the show even if they don't agree with me it's okay and like I have my co-host with me all the Virgil Jones hello and I have Mr. Peters. Thank, I want to thank you for accepting the invitation, but I'm a somebody else. Well, you know, I was an elected official in the city of Chicago, and uh, I was a ward committee man. Mm -hmm. I uh, was also I taught school fifth and sixth grade. I taught school fifth and sixth grade. Uh, I've lived overseas. So I understand about living outside of the United States. And I don't have all these myths that other people have about outside of the United States or inside of the United States. Yes, sir. Because I have seen things that the world has seen, which gives me a different perspective. You know, uh, I've also uh, spent time in the prison system for something I did not do because of the way I talk and about the things I talk, talk about. Yes. And I learned something about that system, all right, and how it's a system to make money off of human beings, okay. all right? And that's all I have to say right now. Okay, so what, so what you're saying is uh, because you've had a- Hold on for one second. Introduce yourself, hmm? you know, to introduce yourself to the people and thank you for coming on Underground Railroad. Come on, tell them you. something about tell yourself. Them, tell them something about yourself. Yeah, my name is uh, Ed Feeder. I've um, worked for a number of corporations. I worked as an investment advisor. Um, and most recently, I've worked as a, as a volunteer at, uh, at the Career Resource Center uh, for um, uh, people who live in uh, the South Side, and uh, it's part of Father Flagel's organization, where I've been I know, I know Father Flagel. And, and, and uh, I've worked for for CETA in the past, and I've had my my background and roots are in uh, the helping profession. So even though I worked for Corporate America, I've always uh, been an advocate for for helping others and as best I can, and trying to make a difference as an individual. And, and Mr. Peters, I want to thank you. You probably thought I would never invite you on, but you know what? not like that but i want to ask you mr peters you know we have we have phone conversations and i'm speaking loud because courtesy i appreciate that and, I'm already um, <laughs> you said that the underground railroad needs some fine tuning that we're mixed up we don't know what to do we distort we distort history we anti-semitic to a certain degree and that the jews had nothing to do with the ant with the um at south atlantic trade slave trade and that the underground railroad just distorts history can you tell us why you say this <clears throat> well first, first let me let me give my 
my perspective as to what was communicated when we talked, because we had several conversations. I enjoyed it too. And and in each conversation, you were um, uh, very open to hearing my comments, whether they're positive or negative. Hey, I'm as open as I can be. I'm on television now. <laughs> Go ahead. And and my intent for for communicating with you was uh, the frustration that I felt watching the show, feeling like. There were certain topics you talked about that were global in nature, conspiracy theory and, and a number of other um, number of other areas that were, um, I'd say, globally based. They were all about politics and different things going on around the world. And I had maybe because I've spent so many years working on some uh, issues locally, like the human rights issues mm -hmm. that I felt strongly about that. My suggestion to you early on was simply that maybe you look at having some content that would focus in the Chicago area or something that would be more focused on the people here in Illinois. You said we were racist to a certain degree, too, but go ahead. Uh, I said certain discussions you had yeah. when it came to uh, the Jews. That, that I felt were inaccurate. Yes, sir. And, and that's what I didn't. I didn't say they were racist, but I Such did say there were certain Such comments that people made on the show that were racist. Such as about the Jews. What about the Jews that are inaccurate? Well, I referred to. I refer. I know I referred to Farrakhan. A comment he made about uh, the white devil. Yes. Um, that's a racist comment. Yes. Um, I made uh, reference to the comments that uh, I think uh, uh, Virgil Jones made about the. Uh, the white Caucasians and, and did it in a tone that was, if you want to know what the white people will do uh, to our race, just look at what they did when they dropped the bomb on Hiroshima. Mm -hmm. um, I thought those were broad generalizations. It doesn't, it, it, it made it, it made it seem like that's, that's when you, especially when you say, and that's a fact. So let me answer something you just <laughs> that said. Makes it, that makes it uh, something that's not open to discussion, and that's let why me, I said let, what I said. Let me give you some discussion. I personally know Mr. F Minister Farrakhan. Minister Farrakhan told me years ago not to defend him. If they ask what I thought about him, ask him if they're talking about Fair Fawcett, all right? <laughs> He says, because people don't like it when you defend me. Now, let me defend Minister Farrakhan. Minister Farrakhan talks because he's talking about what Elijah Muhammad taught him. And he's talking about many, not all, all right, Caucasians. They do one thing. They have devilish ways. They're not devils. All right, but they have devilish ways, and you understand what I mean when I say I understand devilish what you mean. ways. It doesn't change. It doesn't change what I said. No, but but that is the truth. All no, right. No, no. When you say it's the truth, that's your truth. Well, you say it's the truth. Well, let's let's uh, look at <clears throat> what is what they've done in the world. They brought who's they done in the world? Who's they? Those those business folks who brought my ancestors, some of them, because they didn't bring all of us here. I can tell you that this land, historically, with say I didn't, I'm not talking about history, I'm talking about the true story. There's a difference. You're talking about your truth. No, 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 no. I differ with you on the slave trade. If you want to talk well, about that. Well, Sla how did you think we got here? Why do you do? Why do you, why do you differ on the slave trade? Why? Well, one of the stories that uh, is out there is that the Jews were the predominant. Uh, uh, it played a major role in the slave trade. Did they? Did they make any money off the slave trade? I won't say. I, there's two different questions. Now, let me there's be two clear. Two different questions. You remember when we. When there's the, two when, different questions if well, you want well, me to answer. Well, no, let me answer the question. I want to oh, say this. Oh, yeah. I got to say this now. You said the Jews. I made a distinction when we, before we started. I'm not talking about the Jewish religion. All right. There's a difference between the Jewish religion, all right, and the Khazars. You know who they are, right? The who? The Khazars. No. Well, the Khazars were the individuals who lived up in the Caucasus Mountains. 
all right, who came down and became a part of the whole Roman Empire. You could get a book and read we about it. We don't need it. to go back in history like that. That's but, not necessary but, but at this unless point. You know, unless you know history, all right, unless you know history, all right, history rewards all research. If you don't go back and find out who I am, who my ancestors were, you really don't know me, do you? That's a leading question. Well, and, I, and, and, and my answer is, your, the assumption is that I don't know history and my, you do. My great-great-grandfather, all right, my great-great-great-grandfather mm -hmm. was the king of the Yoruba tribe in Nigeria. Well, then you got a lot to be proud of. All right. Yeah. Now, if I didn't go back in history, how would I know that? Uh -huh. Okay, so you've done some ancestral work, and your point is? The point, what, is, point is, the point is, like when I ask you that question, I ask you what was your nationality? And you told me. But how did that get back to the slave trade? Come on, I, I need to bring me home here. Be, because the slave trade involved individuals, bringing individuals from Mother Africa, which was not Mother Africa, was named after Scipius Africanus, mm -hmm. all right, who was an Italian. Am I correct? Who, Sounds Italian. That you don't know that you don't, you saying you don't know the history. Yeah, I know, I know, the, I know the, I, what I do know about, the, what can I, uh, no, what I do know ahead. about the history of the slave trade is, is that the African nations at, at that time were probably the most peaceful, uh, uh, caring people on, on the planet. That's how they were, that's how people, and they were pretty far along uh, uh, culturally in a lot of areas. And uh, all I know is when they started when people started to steal people from from Africa, one of the tribe kings went to, went to the actually went to the, wrote a letter had somebody let, wrote a, write a letter to the Pope to say, "Hey, could you tell people to stop doing this? You know, we don't want this to continue." It went unanswered. So, I, and I know that over 10 million people, you know, uh, were were and and probably more than that. I read the debt a, a, a book about that. And I thought it was an excellent book that talked about not only uh, the, the slave trade, but quantified the financial impact if you were going to do reparations in terms of what that looked like. Say black people really don't deserve reparations. Would you agree with that? No, I wouldn't agree with that at all. I think they do deserve reparations. Okay. Well, um, there was a mandate in 1928, okay. all right, in uh, Havana, Cuba, and they had they had the president of the United States there. I didn't say the president of the United States of America, because there is no president of the United States of America. There's the president of a country called the United States. You know, and that was proven once when our previous president. Well, That's been disproven too. He went down to South America talking about he was the president of the United States. And guess what happened? They told him, you need to go back to Washington. Yeah. You Mr. got a caller? I'm going to come to a caller, but Mr. Peters, I, Mr. Peters, I want to ask you it's, one question. I'm sorry, it's Peter. 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 Peters, I want to ask you one question. You say, in your opinion, the, Jew, the Jews were not involved in the transatlantic trade slave, not at all. They were not involved, right? No, no I didn't. I'm, I'm, I did, ask, no, I'm I, asking. I don't, I don't know. I probably were. So you don't know the history? But there were two questions. No, I do know the history to a degree. Let me, let me answer the question. Before you, before you try to answer it for me, there are two questions you asked. Were the Jews involved in the slave trade, right? Yes. And um, then there was a second part of that. And yes, they were involved. Okay. Okay. Um, and, but it was to a very insignificant number. Now, that's debatable. It goes against what Farrakhan's literature says and the books that he wrote. I understand that. Okay. Well, Minister Farrakhan can defend himself. Okay. Maybe, Minister Farrakhan can defend himself. Okay. Maybe we need to invite him on the show and have you on the show. Yeah, maybe we need to do that. But you know what? We gonna, you know what? All callers, please turn down the volume of your television. And when I say beat the drums, go ahead and talk. Now, caller, go ahead and beat the drums. Go ahead, caller. Hey, brother. How you doing? Shalom, my brother. Go ahead. Hello? Go ahead. Go ahead yes, and talk. Go ahead. You got a question? Thank hey, you. You guys need to um, tell that man the truth, man, and stop playing with him. Because it seems like 
this is his show tonight. Tell him how it's really going down, for real. What's your question for him, brother? I, don't, I know what he mean by really going down, but I'm sick. But go ahead, Alderman. Well, first of all, those individuals who are Zionists, all right, they were involved in the slave trade. That's a fact. Because they were about making money off of human beings. And it was the most cruel slavery in the history of the world. Now, there were people who were from what you called Africa. I don't call it Africa, all right, because I call it Northwest and Southwest a Mexum, because it was land that was given to my ancestors by the pharaohs. Hmm. And that was before the Pangean earthquake, which separated what you called America, all right, the United States yeah. of America. You can hear me? I can hear you. All right. And it separated this land because we as Moorish people were coming over here for thousands of years. They just found a body up in the state of Washington, a mummy, a mummy that was 18,000 years old. You know what they did? They sent military helicopters there to drop rocks and told the archaeologists to get out of there. And that's the truth. See, I only deal with truths. I don't believe in history because history is exactly what it says. It's his story. Excuse and it me said it was the true story. This is a, excuse me, this is a live show. Please come with your telephone calls. Okay. I want to ask you something about Minister Farrakhan that I have, I have the greatest amount of respect for. Would you say, from your perspective, he's a hater? Minister Farrakhan, okay. would you say that he's a hater? Yes. Why do you say that? First of all, first of all, let me clarify something about my intent of being on the show. I'm not at odds with you like you think I am. I, I came on here because I've spent a lot of years working on some civil rights issues that I was wanting to bring forward. In a, in a in totally different way, because I had some comments about thinking your show had some anti-Semitism to it, anti-Semitism, that you said things that weren't always accurate, and then having me on the show and trying to drill down on that, that's not what I, what, where I'm coming from. I'm, I'm, I'm not, it, it, it's because we disagree on some fine points, doesn't mean that I'm an adversary. But you know, you know what though, my, my whole, you know what my whole, per one of my purposes of having you come on was to hear a totally different view. Just because people watch the Underground Railroad, everybody that sits in this shit does not, does, does not, and does not have to agree with me. And I want to hear a totally different perspective. That's the, <coughs> that's why you're sitting in this chair. Right well, there's, there's, a, okay. there's a thing, there's a thing in, in Judaism called Lasha Horan. I don't know if you're familiar with that term. I'm not. It's called, <laughs> it, it, it relates to evil tongue. Mm -hmm. And it has to do with gossip and saying things that aren't true. And it's a very, very powerful, uh, uh, <laughs> very significant issue in, in, in our culture because when somebody does take a slanted tongue to something, it alters reality. It changes the path of what would have been and alters it to something else. Mm -hmm. And so my point in calling you was that if there's things that you're saying that, are, that I feel aren't true, and, and I can point to things that oh, I, I, can, I can say these are facts, just like you can, then uh, if that's true, then you're causing people to think and have thoughts about uh, whether it's Zionism or Jews in general, there's that, a difference. That is not, yeah, there is a difference. There's a big it difference. Not, I have it many. It is not accurate. I have, if it's not accurate, I owe it Feather, I have, to myself to I try have, to correct it. That's I all. Have, yeah. I have many, many Jewish friends who practice the religion okay. of Judaism. Okay. All right? I don't want to have any friends who are Zionists. Yes. And you should know the difference. Mm -hmm. All right? Is it a difference? Mm -hmm. There are many people in the country of it Israel, is, okay. all right, that don't follow the Zionist line right. of many people that are there. 
Okay. But I have nothing against them. I've been to good All right, like they're friends of mine. I have many friends. We sit down and talk. Yeah. You know what? This is a live TV show. And um, Carla, go ahead and beat the drums, Carla. Go ahead. Yeah, I just want to uh, kind of uh, clear up something that happened with, Virgil, what Brother Virgil Jones said to you, guess, uh, Feeder. Uh, I think the reason why he's kind of avoiding the topic of Jews is because Peter itself is a German last name from Bavaria. So when you start talking about the slave trade, and there was a book called Who Brought the Slaves to America, uh, was under Aaron Lopez, who was Jewish, and they were found to be very uh, influential in the slave trade. Yes, sir. I would like to hear what you had to say on based respond, on that. Respond to that. Uh, I don't pretend to be an expert on, on, on all the details of, of the slave trade. What I do know is after having read the books at, at, uh, that uh, Farrakhan had at their bookstore, I became concerned that uh, what if this was a reality, I needed to look into it because I would be, you know, I was concerned that, you know, this is something that was hidden from me, much like uh, uh, they did in, in World War II. I didn't even know that it was a segregated army, I mean, military. So these are things you want to take serious. And when I looked into it, I realized that uh, it wasn't necessarily factual. Yeah. So now, the specific instance he, he just brought up, I couldn't say one way or the other. But, um, but in terms of uh, uh, what I do know is that in general, the Jews played an insignificant role. And we can go into details at another time. Yeah. And I can be prepared for that. But uh, I'm side. not an expert in we that. We do it on the other side. Next caller, go ahead and beat the drums, caller. Go ahead. Hello? Go ahead. We hear you. Go ahead. Yes. Yes. I think the way that you've been talking to your guest is very racist. He's here to talk about some human issues, human right issues, and he hasn't been able to speak about that. I would like the guest to be able to comment on Okay. What is issues we, are with we, human rights? We're gonna do. You know what? We're going to do that on. The, we're going to do that on the other side. But you know what? He was brought on for this live show to tell what things. I'm not racist at all because I don't control anything. Race. If you racist when you control institution. Well, well, you I know? can say one thing. We got five minutes. He said that he deals with civil rights. I don't believe in civil rights. I believe in human rights. There's a difference between civil rights and human rights, all right? And that was, that's what's got us messed up today, yes. all right? I don't believe, I believe that we should have separate a lot of things. Yes. You know why? Because when my ancestors had separate stuff, we didn't have all this unemployment in our black community because they were able to go to work in stores and things that we owned. They were able to give employment. And when you wanted to integrate, all right, and you see what happened, there are no businesses in the black community. Yes. When you go to Tulsa, Oklahoma, when we were independent, see, I don't believe, believe in that, free, that freedom stuff. I believe in being independent. There's a difference between independence and being free. Exactly. No, no, and I, I, I and know you that... said you have done a lot of work. Well, let me tell you, I was once the president of the Miles Square Federation Community Organization that founded the Miles Square Health Center on the west side. Okay? That's before I became the alderman later on in my life outside. I was the youngest president. Mm. And we did many things, all right, four minutes. building the community. When I left, People forgot all about that, all right? I believe that you should have programs for young people in order to prepare yeah, them to be educated, to have skills, and I believe so that they can work for themselves. We agree on that. I don't believe in teaching them to just go get a job. Yeah. I believe in training them to do what? Work for self. I agree. Excuse me. So we do agree on something. Oh, yeah. No, we, we agree on that. Excuse me. <coughs> you know what, Mr. Peters, you know what? We're going to do a part two, but you know what? Do you have any, like, closing statements that you would like to convey to the people? 
closing statements? <clears throat> well, in, cl in closing, I guess uh, I just want to communicate something that uh, I've learned that I think uh, it would be helpful for everybody to know that's listening. And that has to do with the, uh, the Civil Rights Act of 1964. And that, um, 68. in general, um, it, it is not being implemented at all the way it was intended. Uh, for example, if you look at the, just a short time ago, uh, stuff that was put before some of the senators regarding uh, the investigations that are done regarding race discrimination, people coming forward with charges, less than half, less than 50 percent are even investigated. Yet they say that they're investigating and they're required to investigate all of them. Um, I've been involved in one particular case where there's actually uh, all kinds of shenanigans that the employers go through to get over, and it's very easy for them to get over the way that current statute is being implemented left. at the state level. So what I'd like to say is that I would hope that somebody would pick up the slack on that and, and, and focus on it because it's a big area of need. Mm -hmm. Will you continue watching Underground Railroad TV show? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right I will. We're, we're, we're really the kind of people that some of your percep perceptions had once you get to meet us personally. What, what, what are my perceptions? Were you, were you, were we all of the perceptions that you had? It's not that much different from what I, what, what I, you really think. Yeah, from what I thought, not that much different. <laughs> mm. <laughs> all right. And you know what, you're watching, and thank you for accepting the invitation. And we'd be on you're the welcome. other side. Salam alaikum to everybody. You're looking at the Underground Railroad. We come on every Saturday night at 1030. But you can go see us on YouTube. Put in Alderman's name or put in my name and I Google what's up, Mr. Alderman always says. Slam and lick. I do think if you, if you knew me more. And on his journey, he was attacked by wild beasts. And so he ran until he found a fortress. And he stood outside of the fortress and he said, A'udhu Billah, I seek refuge in Allah with this fortress to protect me from the wild beasts. But he sat there out in front of the fortress, only saying, A'udhu Billah, Bihad al husn al hasin and he never went inside. And so the beast ate him up, because he only made his isti'adha, but he did not act upon it. Indeed, he did not actually seek the protection that the fortress actually gave. And so as it tells us, as Allah tells us in Surah al dhariyat verse 50, فَفِرُّوا إِلَى اللَّهِ إِنِّي لَكُمْ نَذِيرٌ مُبِينٌ And run, escape to Allah, for surely I am a clear warner. And so the Prophet, peace be upon him, was told to tell his followers that you should escape to Allah. So you don't escape into nothingness, into depression or oppression or hayat dunya but escape to Allah. فِرُّوا Allah. And so we found ourselves with the soul leaving the body. This is a very sacred moment. And there are many hadiths, many traditions, many scholars have looked into this. Alhamdulillah, in these times, two great scholars of hadith and Islamic studies, Sheikh Nasr al-Din al-Albani, in a book called Kitab al-Janais, the Book of Janazas, 